Did you know the promise of God is every spiritual blessing? Right now, the church so needs to hear that again. I don't mean this church, I mean every church needs to hear that again. And it's a message that many of us know very well indeed. But in the busyness of life and the chaos around us, it gets crowded out. We're living in dreadful times today, as Michael was praying. That the world is in turmoil, politically, economically, socially. Many today are suffering, dreadful suffering, from the rising cost of living, effects of the recent floods in this country, post-COVID issues. There's real anxiety about the future across society, but particularly, we're told, amongst the young people. They're looking for hope. All the time here in the UK, we witness further desertion of society from the biblical standards in both public and private life. And brothers and sisters, we at uh, Stoke Green Baptist Church have not had exactly an easy 2023, have we? <laughs> it's been tough. But you see, as Christians, we are not immune from the spiritual battle that is waging in the world. We are soldiers, Paul suggests. We are to stand, he says. So our text today, I'll come to it, I promise. <laughs> our text today is Paul's call to the church at Ephesus. And uh, he wants them to fully appreciate the scope and the awesome nature of God's plan to rescue his people and establish his church. And today with Christmas coming and all the busyness of this marvellous time of year, and please I'm not, <laughs> not advocating we don't celebrate Christmas, but I, I do know how busy we get. And we're retired for goodness sakes, you know. But you get busy around this time and everybody is busy. And it's good and it's, it's a marvellous time of year to celebrate. But we need to remember that this is a celebration of Jesus' original coming, his coming as a child to save us, but he is coming again to fulfill the promise of hope. And that's what you and I are privileged to celebrate. So, uh, the time of his return, brothers and sisters, is closer now than it was last year. Do you feel the expectation? <laughs> So, here we go. Have you ever dared to doubt God's plan? Well, here in Ephesians 1 uh, are 11 verses, I want to suggest, that should dispel any anxiety or uncertainty that you may feel in the chaos of this world right now. Paul, from his prison, he was in prison when he wrote this to the Roman church that he knew quite well. Uh, sorry, he was in prison in, in Rome, but he was writing to the church at Ephesus that he knew quite well. And he, he addresses it in the formal way <coughs> that one does in, in, in those days. And then he bursts, after the first two verses, he bursts into praise. And these 11 verses are, are his praise. Before he does that, we need to know that Ephesus was a major centre for pagan worship. Any decent pagan <laughs> would be there. Any pagan type worship centre would be there in Ephesus represented. So when you talked about God, lots of people would say, well, I, I worship God. Yes, but Paul wanted them to know, listen, he says, Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no question about which God he is talking about. And sometimes today, you can meet people that say, yeah, I, I worship God too, but who is that God that you worship? Because actually, in a sense, we all have gods in our life, don't we? The driving force of our lives sometimes is, is, is our own appetites, our own desires which are not always wrong, but do need to be tempered 
by who really is the God. So Paul writes these, I'm coming to the text now, okay. In uh, verse three he says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. It's marvellous, isn't it? Those of us who, who are familiar with this text, it's, it's one you've read, I know, lots of times. And I can't read it more times. I just need to study it more just to Im allow it to, to imbibe me, almost. <laughs> because it's so precious, what Paul is telling us. And 11 times in those 11 verses, we have the phrase, or something similar, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. That's the word that Paul uses for all who have put their trust in Christ and are following him. Christ is the source of blessing, in verse 3 he says, uh, yeah, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms uh, with, with his pleasure, sorry. Uh, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, there, he's the source of the blessing. The instrument of his blessing, in verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, and he is the guarantee of our blessing too, in verse 13 when he says, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal. Yes, that's us. If you recognize that, good. If you have believed and followed Jesus, then good, because these are the benefits that you and I know. And sometimes they, they get covered over by all sorts of other living issues. But here in this, these 11 verses, we understand our identity and our purpose because it is found in Christ. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> Let me unpack it a bit further for you, okay? Let me unpack it and see if I can draw you on with it. So, you are blessed is the first one, right? You are blessed with a blessing, with a few blessings with many blessings. No, 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 with every spiritual blessing. Not just, God doesn't do things in halves. He's not a niggardly God. <laughs> you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. And you are blessed, notice the tense, it's done already. You don't have to wait for qualification time. You don't have to wait for some future date. You, as a Christian, are already blessed with every spiritual blessing. That's what Paul tells us. And those spiritual blessings, of course, are those, the blessings of, of, in the heavenly realms. We are blessed already in heaven. <laughs> in the heavenly realms, we are already blessed. 
And then comes this uh, wonderful thought that we are chosen. Yeah. He chose us in him. He chose us. I've often said this, and probably, sorry if it's repeat, but I've often said, I wouldn't choose me. <laughs> when I was in, uh, I've been marked here, you see. When I was in primary school, I remember standing in the school playground and they said, oh, you, team A, you, team B, now choose me. <coughs> well, I was always amongst the last to be chosen. <coughs> Why? Because the team that I was in always lost. <laughs> Why would you want me? Why does God want me? Not because I can give anything more to him. It's what he wants to give to me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and here comes now a, a difficult concept for us. And, th and that is he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Before the creation. This is the mystery of election. God chose us before the beginning of the world. It wasn't a chance meeting, you know. Sometimes we think, oh, well, it's a chance meeting. I came across this Christian and suddenly I start to ask questions. And, and you say, or you might say, John, John Stott explains the mystery of election rather nicely. He, said, he says, you say, didn't I choose? John, John comes back, yes, freely, because God in eternity chose you first. Oh. <laughs> Didn't I decide for Christ then? Yes, freely, because God decided through his pleasure and will before the beginning of the world. Oh, wow. You are chosen. You're not just chosen, much more precious than that, in a sense, you are adopted. Brothers and sisters, there's a, uh, this is where he gets, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. Next slide, Lewis, sorry mate, thank you, that's lovely. See, it works, he's, he's working well at the back there, thank you. And adoption in those days, in, in Roman culture, if I had, I would have a large family usually, especially if I had wealth. <laughs> And if I had a large family and none of the, the, the family sons, because it was always the sons, sorry about it, but the, the sons were, were not doing well. They were not the sort of sons I wanted to pass on my uh, goods to. So I would look for somebody in society to adopt. And it was perfectly legitimate in Roman culture in those days for that to happen. So when Paul says we are adopted, he was talking to people who understood the process. You and I are not just chosen, we are adopted into the family of God. We are brothers and sisters of Jesus. God wasn't content just to say, okay, come and be on my team. He wanted you to be in his family. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a miracle of grace, isn't it? Okay, now verse 7, it goes on, redeemed. Okay, in him, notice Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of his grace. We know that, don't we? We take communion in re remembrance that only he could have taken the price for our sins, that we might walk free and be cleansed. Wow. And then he says in verses 9 to 10, he, he, he talks about the fact that he confides in us. I love it. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. He confided in us the perfect plan that he had, the mystery of his will, his rescue plan that he purposed in Christ. And he told them, he said, this is it, this is what it is. And the times, the word times, there is kairos, and in the Greek it means the right time, not just any time. God doesn't do things in any time, he does things in the right time. 
okay, and all things will be united, he says, under mm. Christ. The chaos that exists today in this world, it seems an impossibility, but God is into impossibles. Nothing is impossible for him. And this is his plan, and it will happen. It will take place, and he is about it now. And he has called us to be part of it and to be the soldiers that he uses to bring it about. Wow. <laughs> Are you wowing? Perhaps you're not. I don't know. Many of you know this is truth anyway. I just want to encourage you <laughs> as we remind each other of the amazing grace of God. Now in verse 13, it says this. It says, Paul says, right, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth. He's talking now to the Gentiles. Remember, this, this God was the God of, uh, of, the, of the Jewish nation. God of Israel and suddenly now Jesus has come and Jesus has said no Gentiles were now included and he's talking to the Gentiles in Ephesus and which was largely a Gentile church okay it had the, the heart of it was the Jewish uh, Jews who'd come with Paul to found the church but the rest were known as Gentiles and you were included in Christ when you heard. Isn't that amazing? That's the day when you heard <coughs> you were included in Christ. <coughs> but there's a warning here because further in that same verse there's a warning that hearing alone is not salvation. You can hear the gospel time and again, you can love the gospel, you can read your Bible, but if you don't go another stage, it ceases to be effective because he says, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal. It was when you believed, and you know what it's like, most of you who've come to Christ in, in a, a, a tough journey, it's been, it's been difficult to get there. <laughs> but when you believed, suddenly the penny drops. That's as a bad one. <laughs> the, the, the light shines and you say, yeah, I still don't understand it all, but I understand it for me. I understand what God is saying to me. Okay. Now, the question is, how? <laughs> I want to ask that question, because that's the question so often, you know. And, and in verse 4, Paul says, For you chose, he chose us in him, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love. That's how. In love. God's plan originally included <clears throat> you. In love. That's amazing. He loved you before the beginning of the world and he still loves you now, today. That's how. But also in verse 5 he says, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. I love that. God is unpacking his plan for us and he says, I am so pleased to put it into being. You know, I have a, I have a belief that, that when Jesus came, when the baby was born, that heaven held its breath. They've been waiting for this since the beginning of the world. They've been waiting for God to put into place his plan to save and rescue his people and us and his church. And now it was happening. <coughs> wow. <coughs> but it was his pleasure and his will that that should happen. You know, when we get to heaven, we won't get any gold medals. You know, oh, John, well done, chaps. He did awfully well. Here's, here's, a, here's a special medal. No, because it's nothing to do with me. It was in Christ. <laughs> How wonderful. In love, in his pleasure and will, and in grace again. 
And many times we, we hear this word grace, don't we? The undeserved favor of God, freely given through Christ, freely given. And I love it, in verse 8 he says this, he says, he lavished on us this grace. This grace was lavished on us. That's a wonderful word, isn't it? Superabundance, an overflow like a fountain from a deep source. His riches in Christ on us. With, and he does it with all wisdom and understanding. I love that. Paul knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> he knows you. And he loves you. And even when you are not lovable, you are still loved by him. And even with that knowledge and understanding of your failures, my failures, my sinful nature, my flesh that riles sometimes, even that, he says, ah, I lavish on you the grace in Jesus, knowing that stirred. And he makes known his plans. We become confidants. Isn't that wonderful? It's a lovely expression now, confidence. He trusts us with his plan. According to his good pleasure. Yeah. Okay, so that's the how. So what about the why? For the praise of his glory is what the why is. Yes, for the praise of his glory. <clears throat> Verse 6, he says, to the praise of his glorious grace. Verse 12, he says, in order that we who were for the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. In verse 14, at the end, he says, to the praise of his glory. The purpose of God's electing activity is to reveal his glory as a loving, saving God. And Paul here has burst into praise because he knows that and he wants everybody else to know that. He wants us to know that now that it is we are called by him and receive all these blessings. Why? For the praise of the glory of God himself. You are in Christ. You are blessed. You are chosen, you are adopted, you are redeemed, you're confided in, you're included, you're marked by the Holy Spirit. Here is the evidence that you are loved by God. <clears throat> wow. Today, you are for the praise of his glory. You are his trophies of grace, his stars in the darkness, his evidence to the unbelieving, his truth amidst the lies, his life to the dying. You are for the praise of his glory. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, whether you're in that valley or whether you're on the mountaintop today, go with confidence into the world this Christmas, knowing who you are and why you're here. Your purpose and your identity are in Christ and praise the Lord for all his benefits. As we celebrate together, Advent is coming again. Let's praise the Lord. Let's pray, shall we? Father, open our hearts again to these truths. Help us, Lord, as we seek to be authentic witnesses for you. May this Christmas be a special time, not just for families and for celebration, and not just for reaching other people with the good news, but, but Lord, that it will be a real change in people's lives around us because they see the praise of his glory in our lives and in the life of of Stoke Green. Jesus, that's our desire. That's your will. 
That's your plan, Lord. So come, Lord Jesus, and help us. Come that these words may be turned into reality this year and next and the coming years as you unpack your plan, Lord. <laughs> help us, Father, we pray.